the more that we study group theory, the more that we're going to want to begin to build a repertoire of techniques for understanding how simpler groups can be put together to make more complex groups, and vice versa, how complicated groups can be taken apart to reveal the simpler substructures within. One of those important tools that we're going to really dig into in the next chapter is how to take products of groups. That's a way of taking two groups and using them as building blocks to build a larger group. There are many ways to do that, and I want to explore one of them in this video that actually was a key element in our classification of all of the groups of double prime order. This is a technique called the internal direct product of two subgroups. So the way that it works is if I have a group G and I have two subgroups, H and K, inside of that group, then I define the internal direct product of H and K as just the set of all elements in G, which I can make by multiplying an element of H times an element of K. So we're going to look at what this actually looks like in a moment. But I want to say, first of all, the big caveat, that H times K, this internal direct product of two subgroups, is not always even a subgroup at all of G. So be extra super careful. It turns out, in a couple of chapters from now, we'll come up with some necessary and sufficient criteria for H and K in order that H times K be a subgroup, and this will be one of our important tools for building up bigger groups from smaller ones. But for now, just remember that H times K is not necessarily a subgroup at all. What we're going to do in this video is prove the product theorem, which is a way of counting the elements in H K, the internal direct product. And it tells me that there are as many elements in this direct product H K as there are the product of the orders of H and K separately divided by the order of the intersection of H and K. Or another way to think about this is if I multiply the order of H by the order of K, I'm going to get some possibly big product. But that that product is the same thing as the product of the cardinality of the set HK. I'm using cardinality because I don't know if it's a subgroup at all, right? The cardinality of HK times the order of the intersection subgroup of H and K. So why should this product counting formula be true? I'm going to illustrate this by way of example that I hope suggests the general proof. Suppose I take the group S4 of permutations of four symbols, and the two subgroups H, which is a subgroup generated by the transpositions 1, 2, and 3, 4, those are disjoint, and therefore the only other element that needs to be in their subgroup is the product 1, 2, 3, 4, which is the same as 3, 4, 1, 2, and so this is a subgroup of order 4. And my other subgroup I'm going to take is the alternating group on four symbols. It's a much larger subgroup. So what I want to do is understand what this product, this internal direct product set, actually is. What elements does it contain? And because it consists of every element in H multiplied by every element in K, there's going to be in total 48 possible products that I can make out of this. Four elements coming from H multiplied by the 12 different elements that come from K. And so all these elements here in the middle of my table, all 48 of them, all of those products, are going to be elements of this internal direct product. There's 48, and that's what we get when we multiply the order of H by the order of K, 12 times 4. But when we take a closer look at these 48 products, what we realize is first of them, first of all, all of them are elements of S4 just because of closure, because all the elements of H and all the elements of K are elements of S4. When I multiply them together, I'm only going to get other elements of S4. The problem, though, is that S4 only has 24 elements in it, and there are 48 products in this table. So there must be some doubles. And the question is, are those doubles predictable? Do I know for sure, for example, that every single element of S4 appears in this table exactly twice? And if I do know that, does that suggest the general principle by which we prove the product theorem? I'm hoping in this video the answer is yes. So let's take one element that we see twice, the 4 cycle 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm finding it here once and there once. So it's in this table once because it's the product of 3, 4 with 1, 2, 4. And it's in here again because it's also the product of 1, 2 with 2, 3, 4. Let's see if we can make sense of why we should expect those two different products to be related one to another. So on the one hand, 1, 2, 3, 4 
is the product of 3, 4 multiplied by 1, 2, 4. Is there a way that we can rewrite that product in a different way to understand how this other product is related to the first one? And the key to this observation, looking ahead to our product theorem, is going to be to use strategically the elements which belong to the intersection of these two subgroups. And there's exactly two elements. One of them is the identity. The other one is 1, 2 composed with 3, 4. There are exactly two elements that belong to both subgroups. So what I'm able to do is take one of those elements, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, and wedge it in between my 3, 4 and my 1, 2, 4. But so as to not screw up the product, I'm going to wedge it next to its own inverse. This is like the classic trick in algebra, where you have an algebraic expression you want to try to factor, maybe. And the first thing you do is you add and subtract something that's the same. Often when you factor a polynomial by grouping, for example. Oh, I realize I need to add 5x and also subtract 5x here in the middle. That's this trick. So I'm strategically multiplying and also dividing at the same time by this element 1, 2, 3, 4, which happens to be an element in the intersection of my two subgroups. Why is that helpful? Well, because 1, 2, 3, 4 belongs to H, that means that its product with 3, 4 also belongs to H. So the first half of this expression is a product which I know is going to be an element of H. Similarly, because 1, 2, 3, 4 belongs to K, so does its inverse by the inverse property. And therefore, so too does the product of that inverse with 1, 2, 4, which is an element of K, by the closure property applied to K. So the first half of this expression is an element of H, multiplying the second half of this expression, which is an element of K. Therefore, I'm going to know that this product is still going to be one of the products in HK, but that first element, it turns out when we simplify it, is exactly 1, 2, and that second element, when I simplify it, is exactly 2, 3, 4. And that exactly accounts for the other way in which this same element, 1, 2, 3, 4, appears in this table full of products in my internal direct product. So what this justifies to me is that if you hand me an element that is in the intersection of H and K, I can do this little multiply and divide trick to show you how to turn one of these products into another one of these products in the same table. So every single element in the intersection is going to give me a repetition of my element somewhere in the table. Now the only other question is, why can't it give me more than one different way to repeat? Is this the only way in which I can associate to an element of the intersection of these subgroups a repetition of my element in the internal direct product? To justify that, we're going to look at how to go backwards in this process. If you hand me uh, an element like 1, 2, 3, 4 that appears twice in this table, can I figure out which element in the intersection of H and K is responsible for relating those two uh, different products together? And the answer is yes. So supposing I didn't know that 1, 2, 3, 4 was going to be the element that does this particular transposition, right? How would I find that 1, 2, 3, 4? Well, because this product is appearing twice, it's equal to the same element, 1, 2, 3, 4. That means that 3, 4 times 1, 2, 4 and 1, 2 times 2, 3, 4, these two different products in HK, are both equal to the same thing. Therefore, they're equal to each other by the transitive property of equality. But I can rearrange this equation to get all of the elements of H, the purple things, onto the same side of the equation, and all the elements of K, the green things, onto the same side of the equation as well. All I have to do is multiply on the left by 1, 2 inverse, and on the right by two, uh, 1, 2, 4 inverse. And now I've got uh, everything on the left-hand side of my equation are elements of H. Everything on the right-hand side of my equation are all elements of K. And therefore, this product represents an element of H by closure. This product represents an element of K by closure. But because they're equal to one another, that means that these two expressions are both representing an element which belongs both to H and to K, and therefore to the intersection. And when we look at what those products are, we do them out, we find out those products are exactly 1, 2, 3, 4. It's an element of H because the left-hand side. It's an element of K because the right-hand side. But because they're all equal, it's an element of the intersection, H intersect K. So we now know exactly how to go back and forth. If you give me an element of the intersection of H and K, I can show you exactly why any of the elements inside of this table get repeated because of that element. So you give me 1, 2, 3, 4, I do this process, and I turn this expression for this four cycle into that expression for that four cycle. Conversely, 
if you give me two different appearances of the same element in this internal direct product, I can show you exactly the element in the intersection of H and K that's responsible for that repetition. Therefore, the repetitions of elements in this chart are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the elements in the intersection H intersection K. So what I'm saying is that each element of the set HK, of which there are cardinality of HK many, is appearing in this chart exactly as many times as there are elements in H intersection K, that is to say, order of H intersection K times. And so this is a proof of that product theorem. It's a really interesting theorem in its own right. It's almost like a, a bit of a combinatorial uh, argument. We have to do some really careful counting of repetitions of elements. But it turns out to be abstract algebra that gives us a structure that we need to accomplish that counting. And this theorem does exactly that. It says if I take the internal direct product of two subgroups H and K, and if H and K are finite, then that internal direct product is going to be finite. But the number of elements, after we account for repetitions, the number of elements in the set HK is related to the product of the orders in H and K by this formula. Because it says that every element in this set, internal direct product HK, is going to appear in this chart, which has H, uh, order of H times order of K many elements, exactly as many times as there are elements in the intersection of H with K. So this is a super important result for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is that it helped us in the next video to characterize how many groups there are whose order is twice a prime number.